is the engage. Quickness up for Hillisang if he wants to go in. Caps down towards the bottom side. Cosmic Radius comes out the quickness. Gets onto two, gets onto three. Damage. Solis in the back line. Caps is raining damage down onto Maxwell. That's one. Caps still alive. Watch that Kaiser because he's the one to make the play. Second knocks it back. That was a misplay from Misfits. Perhaps Fnatic can capitalize here. The fight continues. Hunt Summer exhausted. Caps is still alive. He's dead. No, he's not. He gets clapped with an axe in the back by Misfits. Reckless has to jump away and Misfits win the break. Um, when I, uh, I was kind of last picking Draven, so when I saw those the composition, I was like, we didn't play much Draven, I would say, in scrims, but uh, when I saw the composition, I was really confident on that pick, and it just felt really free of having two squishies above them. Welcome back to opening week. We just heard from Hans Sama. Well, yesterday, Misfits absolutely slaughtered Fnatic, and a lot had to do with the French AD carry in the bottom lane, picking his signature Draven. I think that's important to say, because this is his favorite champion, but you just don't get a lot of opportunities to play it. And damn, did he play it. Yeah, Hans Sama looked like a god. You watched the reel that we just saw of him flashing forward to finish off caps. That was the hero play I always wanted to see out of it. Yeah, and it's kind of the performance that you want to be seeing from him, because we think back to spring. At the very beginning of the split, Han Summer was the carry for this team. And as the split went on, he kind of started to taper off. And many fans were worried, will he still be able to be one of the top contenders for one of the best AD carriers in Europe? And his first game, he brings out an AD carry, defies the meta and says, yes, I've still got what it takes and has a stellar performance. Talking about defying the meta, I do think it's important to look at the rest of the composition that Misfits brought out. Why did this Draven work? And was it particularly about protected Draven or did it have some other ideas? Uh, I really think that it was, again, about having early playmaking tools. The Draven Morgana lane definitely had that, and it helped the fact that they were just in an isolated two versus two because they could never be ganked, and that allowed them to play aggressively and constantly pressure. They were reckless. also playing versus a reckless on Janna, and yes, as we see that, that made yeah. things a lot oh easier God. as well, you know, and I think it's really important that you highlight that ender, and uh, the reality is that when there is no jungler in the game, getting kills in the two versus two becomes that much easier to do. And so they would feel very confident around it, but I don't know if the comp is necessarily built around trying to enable Draven. We heard from Hansam where he said, I saw an opportunity, I saw a free lane, I decided to go for it. I think the comp was just about being able to make early game plays and to try and deny the Kaisar from as much farm as possible. We saw level one invades, Camille with her stun very early on is a very powerful champion. You have the support from a Lulu as well and all the pieces kind of came together to enable Misfits to go for these early skirmishes, find these early playmakers, and shut down Cap. Yeah, and not he, particularly and around Draven, I was just going to say, but he does have a Lulu, a Morgana, and a Shen, so exactly. if it doesn't work, they're still there to help. There's exactly. so much yeah. protection for him. Yeah, uh, so uh, overall, I think if we take a step back, we have to commend the fact that Misfits came in with a plan, the Moosh had a plan, and was ready not only just to play things, but as Hansama said, I could lock it in last. He probably wouldn't have done it if it didn't fit in what they saw coming out of Fnatic. So I think all kudos to the coach and to Misfits. And this is where we have to take a step back and look at Misfits as a whole. Fantastic start. And they said it themselves. This is our redemption split. We should not be happy with what happened in spring. Not even making playoffs with a roster of this caliber is honestly a disgrace. So we want to see better things out of them in summer. And more strategies. I've already seen the one shutting down the hyper carry combination. I'm sure there's so much more in the Moose's playbook. A lot of stuff to revolve around uh, Max Lore out of the jungle. I'm excited to see him on some more aggressive picks and anything the Han Sama plays will be a treat. And while it was a good performance from Misfits, I'm not entirely sold just yet. I feel like that they need to redeem a couple more games before I'm entirely sold or that they are back in action. But what I can say is, while it's great that they beat the top teams, they've already proved they could do that last yes. split. It was the bottom teams that they actually struggled against and why they were not able to qualify for playoffs. So UOL could be one of their biggest rivals as the split progresses. Great point. That was their big problem. They couldn't beat the teams that were below them. And when we look at low uh, place teams, unfortunately, that is the unicorns of love right now in this moment. They had a horrible first split. They didn't have the best first day, but we have to jump off the positives that we saw at the end of the spring split. And honestly, also yesterday, 
Exile and Cold together did so show rather some very good synergy and good building blocks going into the rest of right. the Right, Cold gave a lot of attention to Exile in the mid lane. He was playing his signature Yasuo and even in the counter matchup of the, of the Kale, he had the assistance from Cold to turn around this sweet play. Exactly that. I felt like that the whole reason why they found success last split was when they were investing resources into their carry and they once again replicate that strategy and we saw some really cool performances from Exile in the middle lane. The fact that he was getting a lot of great outplays, he was influential in these fights. Unfortunately, it just came to one critical poor decision that resulted in Schalke being able to come back. Right, it was when they dove around that bottom lane, went a little bit too deep underneath the tower. That snowballed into them then losing the Baron and furthermore losing the game. Mm -hmm. We saw there they were ahead in the early game. They were ahead at 20 minutes. It was just one mistake and that is there when we want to see the difference made. Then Cold or whoever it is in that team then has to step up and say, let's not make dope mistakes. Let's bring it all the way to the finish line because as we remember, the Unicorns of Love had a horrible start to the spring split. So I think whatever happens, they need to make sure that they get a couple of wins on the board in these first couple of weeks, even if they are building up synergy. We are looking at Cold as the shot call and I'm also looking at the mid laners on both teams, to be honest, because when we talk about redemption from Misfits, I think the same goes for Exile. This is a guy that's been up and down for so long, but when he's on, he can do very well. So how much will this matchup influence the game. For me, it's just a really important matchup because as you rightly said, uh, he was he's always been a volatile player. Exile is always entertaining to watch because you never really know what Exile is going to show up on the day. He picks crazy stuff, he has crazy performances, um, but he's just always so up and down. Right off the start of the split, he's looking pretty good. And the same can be said for his counterpart in, X, uh, in Senkux in the middle lane who he was kind of the big weakness of Misfits last play. He was the guy that was very invisible. He was someone that we didn't really see much from. Very invisible. Yeah, Jeez. and it was just like he was a disappointment to me. And so coming into this bit, already having a good performance yesterday on the Lulu, you're kind of looking at two mid laners that already are starting off strong. And I want to maintain that performance and challenge the likes of Caps and Perks at the top of the stand. I would like to say, though, that while Senkux did have a very good performance, he wasn't laning against anyone because Fnatic <laughs> were playing the, you know, support jungle duo. Uh, he didn't have much of a challenge in a one versus one. So against Exile, now's a good chance for him to prove himself in that matchup. We'll see what happens. I know what you guys think will happen is that Misfits is going to take the victory over the Unicorns of Love. Let's take a look at your predictions and what the fans voted because just before we continue, if we look at game one, Ender is uh, for now at least a superior analyst. Only you and Law had Rocket at yeah. the winner. Who guessed Rocket? I did. Norskaren dabbing on him <laughs> with oh, the pipe. the madman did it. <laughs> I, I can't believe it. He, I, My oh. eyes hurt. <laughs> Misfit versus the unicorns of love. Uh, you guys. It's okay, Betty. It's okay. You guys and the fans all. Did I just get out cringed? Did that just happen? <laughs> <laughs> I think so. Anyway, Misfits will be going up next. Uh, yeah, I think we're all pretty confident that Misfits will take the victory. Um, based on their performance yesterday, it would be very difficult to vote for the unicorns of love in this matchup. Mm -hmm. Well, we will see if the unicorns can bounce back against the Misfits as we leave it to Pyra and the Fischio. <laughs> Thank you very much, Shox. All right, so a little bit of flame going back forth. I see that Ender's already settling in to the analyst desk. Uh, he's learning from Vedi. That's uh, the that, wrong well, place. I mean, that's what you, need, you, need to get, you need to get up there and help him out. But uh, that was an interesting one last time. This matchup, I feel like with Misfits, the way that they looked on day one was so absolutely insane. Well, but it was it was it was like it was just countering Fnatic strategy of funneling everything. That's the thing, and that Fnatic strategy, if you manage to shut it down early, is effectively. Close to useless. Yeah. Uh, so, I think this game is a lot closer than people expect. Uh, I think Unicorns Love actually did a lot of good things. It was very classic Unicorns. It's do a lot of good things and we're kind of getting excited. And then one or two big mistakes. And forget to win the game. And then bam, the game is over. Uh, it obviously was the 1-3-1 the -one -one setup at the end where they lost the Nexus. And of course, earlier when they tried to tower dive at Cho'Gath, it all kind of backfired. Apart from that, they actually played well. So, I think this game is going to be a lot closer. I don't think they're going to give Misfits the same kind of you know advantage in the draft phase. Well, certainly won't be tunneling on the funnel, at least don't think they will after what we saw yesterday, but what Misfits are tunneling on is trying to make sure they get Exile off of Comfort Zone. Yeah. They've got the Yasuo removed, of course the Vlad, as you mentioned, Triple Flex, that's gone as well. Also, I think Rakan is a very good ban. He's just generally such a fantastic engage support. Uh, still, Zoe, Irelia, no surprises. Tarek is still open in case we can finally get a Tarek Master Yi in Europe. Uh, also looking at Talia being available in this draft here with Morgana being the last one. So there's still a couple of the traditional power picks uh, left open. All right, taking their time here. It's that Talia should be in the jungle position once more. Locked in for Max Lore. All right, Unicorns, show me the Tarek Master Yi. 
and I want Exile that, on that, is, that would be bold. That would be very bold if they decide to take that on the first two picks. Yeah, I mean, Lulu is also such a good pick. Now we have seen so many teams find success with the champion uh, already. Including Senkooks. Uh, sure. I mean, everyone's wanting to talk up what Hansama did yesterday, but the but Lulu it's not Tarek was good. It's not Tarek Mashi yet. Yet. We got Lulu. That's true. They can still go Tarek here yeah. if you want it's, to. It's, it's just going to be the long Tarek. con. That is definitely not Tarek. That's, Unless uh, that's he uh, changed a lot. Okay, interesting. Alistar, blind picked here. Uh, it, it is one of the comfort picks for Unicorns of Love. Uh, they love to make plays around bottom side with Tarek. And they're obviously telling us instantly that they are looking to try and play around the bot lane with uh, some engage coming in from an Alistar. All right, well, let's see what Misfits are going to answer with. These guys have been taking a little more time, but what was left up this time is going to be the Mundo. This guy, well, he's always been hard to kill, but he's especially hard to kill these days, and there's a reason people have been banning him away. And Alfari took him last game, and the goal is just to try and play 1v1 for as long as possible as the Mundo, and you basically become unkillable because of your late game scaling. And you kill people. Yeah, it's true. They're not shown us anything bot lane anymore. yet, but Varus is, is one of those picks that I feel like should be good right now, but I'm very biased because I've always really liked Varus. I tried to make him a thing doing MSI, and most teams did not agree with me. But well, Misfits clearly do. There we go, we get it. So this one of the picks where uh, Rage Blade is, of course, still fantastic on him. Uh, strong laning phase, and you still have that setup with his ulti. So I think Varus is a good pick in the meta. Always a little bit concerned when I see Varus against things like Alistar, because you don't have mobility. Alistar can engage onto you. So I think you and Love have the tools to play around bottom side here and try and shut down Hansama. And they've got a Camille as well. We saw how scary that could be. Clearly, Unicorns were watching what Misfits were bringing out yesterday. And most likely Cole gets the Camille. He is one of the star players on this lineup, so I like it from Unicorns of Love. I think still the Alistar is, is the question mark, but Lulu Camille we want to see every day because that is such a strong combination. A lot of communication going back and forth between the Unicorns players. Sheepy there. Looks like the Zyra's Zyra. banned away. I know. We've been we've been wondering when this champion's going to appear. It's banned by oh, the Unicorns. That could have been a good combo, though. Zyra plus Varus oh, is effectively instant dear. kill at level 6. I mean, uh, you do not want to land against that. So smart ban here. Will Misfits ban away some bot laners against Samux? He's one of the guys I'm expecting to mainly play AD carries. Uh, it's always kind of been his strength, unless we look back at 2013 when he was a top laner. Yeah, well, I mean, well, again, you know, you were LCS back then. I know, I know, time. a long time ago. What, what would you expect him to pick up in this case? Like, a lot of the traditional AD carries, uh, there's, there's still a lot of them yeah, up available, yeah, actually. Yeah, there's plenty. There's Lucian. Uh, he can go for something he's played a lot in the past. Kalista is something Unicorns Love played as well. There is an Alistar already to pair it with. So there's definitely options uh, for Samax if you want to stick to traditional AD carries. Time can ban also because they have the Alistar to try and make place on the Varus. So Unicorns of Love, it makes a lot of sense what they're banning here to try and deny Mickey uh, and his different supports. Try and shut down the Hansam a little easier as well. So Misfits, they have really been taking their time. The Moose, definitely trying to make sure his team is 100% on that same page. Last ban is going to be the Ezreal. I was thinking Aatrox uh, could also be an option for White Knight. We've seen it already picked against Mundo a few times, where you just have two very, very strong 1v1 champions. Right, he played it too. He also played it already. So it is available here if they want to save AD carry, or bot lane choice for last, but they could just grab whatever they want here. Oh, whatever they want is definitely what they could be grabbing. We saw this one band away last time, down to the wire. Are they mad enough to do it? Here it comes the Darius for White Knight. It's been a pick we've seen a lot in other regions, and I, I, I really like it. I think you get a lot of scrappy skirmishes and fights where Darius can do so well, and he's really good against tanks because they just, they can't really kill him. And he actually, once he gets full stacks, is a massive threat against basically anyone. Uh, obviously, the, the bleed passive I'm referring to here. On the side of Darius, so you know, not so love. We can find so far. That's a Gragas coming in. That's Mickey's Gragas. That is a Mickey support Gragas. Oh, he's played so much Gragas in the past. He always wants Gragas to be meta. He's smiling because we know it's the Gragas. And That's Aurelian Soul. It's I love a Senkook it. special in the mid lane. Aurelian Soul comes out. So Misfits Dude. are in a way to bend the meta to their will. You're playing against Talia Aurel Aurelian Soul. Like, that is double roaming champs coming from the middle lane towards either bot or top lane. And if it's bot lane, that's a Gragas setting up the place with Varus ult. Man, this Misfits comp can set up plays in side lanes so, so well. Looks to be a rise bot lane for Samax. Okay. Okay, okay. Slightly concerned uh, just due to the fact that there is Two roaming champions and a Gragas and Rice, while he does have fine push. 
early on, you can punish him. He takes time to scale. We have to remember that. We got some time on the board, but the way things are looking right now, it looks like Ooh. they actually Ooh, might want to send Exile onto the rise. And that I've gotten so used to Rise being the bot lane, I just automatically yeah. went like, oh, it's the same. It's the, the same thing with, uh, with the me and the Vladimir, man. But yeah, it looks like Unicorns are going to go with that. So Exile, this is one of his comfortable champions. It is, it is. And clearly a matchup he wants to play against the Red. So if it stays, and it seems to stay right now. That makes me just even more concerned for the bottom lane because this Lulu early game, when you get roamed on, like if you get shut down, there's really no comeback mechanic for you in the laning phase because you don't have to damage as Lulu Alistar at level six to kill the enemy bot lane. You just try and stay alive. So if the bot lane is just trying to stay alive, what are the rest of Unicorns going to try to do with this comp? They have to get Darius and Rise ahead with this. The bottom lane is is, is supports. That's what they bring there. Total War, of course, wants to roam and be strong in teamfights, but you have a Camille, good early ganks, good early skirmish, especially if you get onto a Talia, and then you have the Rise and the Darius that are your two massive damage deals on Unicorn's side. Yeah. But Misfits, it's just so much roaming and so much CC bot lane. Afari, yeah, they can go up there if he's already ready to fight it, but generally, bot lane is where you can set up a lot more plays. I will find out who's gonna reign supreme here. Unicorns in love, they need to bounce back. A little bit of an unconventional comp, as anything can be conventional on the 8.11 meta. We'll find out if Misfits can shut them down and go two for zero to end zero on week number one. We're loading up onto Summoner's Rift. Let's kick things off. Get to see if Samus can play Lulu. I've seen a lot of 80 carries already pick it, and they did not look good on the champion. Oh. Also referring to Bang here from SKT being one of them. Uh, yeah, that's uh, that was rough. I, I don't like to think about that one. Uh, the mighty have certainly fallen. I think Samus is happy he's able to play though. Remember, there was some Very worrying true. reports that he wasn't going to be well enough to to play to start off the split, and it, it's glad I'm glad to see him, you know, be able to actually take to it nonetheless. And Ooh, wrong, Alistar skin. That's already a bad start. Wait, oh, come on, Totoro. That's not a good start oh, for them. Cowbell. Maxlaw gets the jungle Talia. One of the picks I actually thought would be Permband uh, coming into this, just because. Her early game is so, so strong, and the damage she can deal onto single targets Minions being so effective. And she can roam around a lot. So she's one of those picks where the moment she shows up in your lane, if you actually get knocked back at first into a full combo of a Q, you're effectively close to dead. Yeah, and the cool thing about that is, you know, normally if there's a roaming champion, you think of Talia as like a mid laner from the past. And you kind of know when she's not in mid lane anymore. Well, if she's jungle, yeah, yeah. then she could just be anywhere. Yeah, I, I think it's a fantastic pick. Uh, obviously, most teams will agree. Senkook's early push here, not too scared of level one Rise. But obviously, one of the things about Rise is always the fact that with an EW combo, keeping the Aurelian Soul in place into a gank setup is something we most likely will see in this game. Because we have to remember the way Unicorns tend to win early games is by ganking for exile. Go mid lane with Cold. He starts top lane, though. All right, that's the investment. That's what we're talking about. But it has also been about trying to get White Knight ahead on this Darius. Not the player that they are usually trying to snowball, but time to change a little bit. Speaking of, Cucks, man, he takes a lot of chunk damage from Exile. That was a level two rise. He was only level one, so that was not a good trade on his side. Cole will get his wrist gutler after looking for that first gank. And look, guys, people are warding very early because Riot wanted to remove level three gank. Instead, they got level two ganking. You just do your, your red buff. I mean, they start looking mission for something. Accomplished. I know what you're talking about. And there you go. Max are also level two looking for something. We're also spotted by awards. It's almost like these guys have now gotten used to level two ganks. Adaptation, that's the name of the game. Cold looks like he's trying to go in down towards the river. Going to spot out Maxlar. Looking for that scuttle fight. It's going to chunk down some of its health bar. Goes right back in to the range of Max Lord. I'm getting excited, Officio. Talk to me. Well, just to say Cold already got the top one, so they're actually fighting to see if you can get a second one as well, but Max Lord will secure this one. He was on Euphoria uh, podcast with video now on YouTube, SoundCloud, and wherever iTunes. Wherever you get your uh, podcast. Yeah, and wherever you get your podcast, those different apps uh, will have it as well. And he talked about how, as a jungler, yeah, it really is just all about Rift Scuttlers. Like, the first ones, that's fine. You trade one each, but then the next one, if you don't get it, you just basically tell your team, guys, carry me. I'm behind. I'm out of the game for oh, it's now. It's an easy way to tell if you're doing well or not. Uh, I, I like simple metrics. I think it's a good time. It's a, little bit, uh, a little bit too snowboarding for certain jungles. I think that bit. is a fair critique. But uh, Unicorns of Love on their side had a good early game yesterday. They actually got a bunch of kills against Schalke. And we were looking at a Unicorns of Love win until sadly the, the poor decisions towards the late game happened. Yeah, it, it, it's rough. I mean, it, it does seem kind of like Unicorns 
that. They know what they want to do, but when push comes to shove, when a, when a tense situation happens, they they seem to fall apart a little bit. Like we saw some panic pushing. They were trying to to shove out some lanes. I think they want they want too much. Yeah, they're greedy. They want it all. They're greedy in the way they're calling in the late game, especially based on yesterday with the Cho'Gath tower dive and then the try the one through one setup at the end, and that just gets punished uh, in a lot of games, and you end up losing despite actually looking fine for most of it. Speaking of a guy that can punish you too. We got to talk about Han Sama yesterday. And I know it's been discussed a little bit at length, but like this guy just did so much work. Look at the damage percentage he was dishing. Now, admittedly, his team had, you know, some some interesting different kinds of champions in it, but 46 and a half percent? Yeah, he had the freest Draven game of all time. He laned against Janna Rakan, who will never touch him at all. And he got early kills on it. He just snowballed out of control. It was a great game from Han Sama. Let's see what happens around mid lane. Maxlor is here. Comment That's the wrong way. The wrong way in oh. front of Maxlor. Guys, do not make fun of him. It's a new champion in the jungle. He's not used to playing things like Talia. That was not great. You just want to get him back on Euphoria, don't you? It's just, I know from these junglers, Joko talked about it yesterday, how weird it is to suddenly play Talia. And that little knockback, it's not that easy to use. No, that's fair. Anyway, maybe he wanted to knock him further away and just get a bit of poke damage. Let's say that's what it's, he went It's not for. about the kill. It's about sending a message. He also flashed forward, so that was really not great. Exile did not have to flash. That's fair. So, Unicorns of Love already off to a better start. Now, it's, there's a slim gold lead here. There's just a farm advantage right now. And in all honesty, the CS kind of looks fairly even across the board. So I'm trying to see where that's actually coming from right now. Meanwhile, White Knight, he wants to roam down. Remember this Darius. This guy wants to bully in the lane. He wants to get ahead. Cold kind of made an appearance in the lane, but didn't really do anything. So Alfari's had no pressure at all. Man, I, I have to go to my screen and just rewatch that gang from Max Lore. Just all right, you go ahead and do that. I'll talk about that. Stun, flash, and then he knocks him away out of his entire combo. We didn't see it, though. We didn't see anything. There we go. Bot lane. There's a big old roam. You talked about this. The two roamers coming. Yeah, baby. Sandwich. Sandcooks, he's knocked under tower. Let's see if they get the kill first. It's going to be first blood. Han Sama picking it up. This is why I said to pick a ban face that I'm scared for this bot lane of unicorns. Like. They can't fight. They can't kill stuff. They are just defensive, and it just sets up roaming opportunities. That's a flash gone. That's a kill, suddenly. And Hansama and Mika are not even level 6 yet. It gets even worse when they also bring a Varus ulti and a Gragas knockback. This will happen three, four more times, and then this turret is dead, and Misfits might be really far ahead unless Unicorns can make something happen on the other side. Afari is not getting punished in the early game. He's literally just sitting there on a mundo. If I had one word of advice for the Unicorns bot lane, it's wards everywhere. Not gonna help you. These guys will appear over walls. Like, unless you can follow them the entire path down river and you're not pushed forward. They I need a lot of wards. Yeah, they need a lot of wards and, not, the and not to push. Uh, but easier thing is try and make something else happen on the map so you're forcing misfits to react to the other side. And right now, Afari, Gets to push out. He's uh, currently sitting on 59 CS. He's not been touched in this early game. And he's very happy. Yeah. It, it seems like Misfits, you know, they know exactly what they want to do in this game, similar to what we saw up against Fnatic. And Unicorns, they're kind of struggling to figure out the game plan at the it's minute. It's fine. It's fine. We're still early on. Uh, we get. We got to just make some plays here. Look at this. Here we go. Totoro's coming in. Botsko, they're saying, hey, let's go topside. That's where we can do something. Don't play around with Lulu. Well, unfortunately, spotted by the ward. Still, let's see if they can do anything. At least steal away a buff. This is the reaction we just talked about. You can't sit bot lane all the time. You will die then. Make something happen on the other side. And they're doing it here. But Misfits, they want to fight them. Looks like the net's going to be closing here. Teleport coming in. Here comes Senkux. Get the combat off. He gets yanked right back in. But that is a lot of damage coming out of Talia. Though Maxlor, he's going to get chunked down. Exile, White Knight, double team. And it looks like they're turning around for Totoro, though. Hansama's getting one in Exile. He's taking oh, the portal he out, out of there. But White Knight, he walks the wrong way. That's a double kill for Hansama. And it looks like Exile, he flashes a smidgen too late. And the Comet's going to take him down. Alfari flashes. Cleaver for the kill. Misfits knew they could take the fight because they had TP on Hansama. But a, a massive thing happened in the bottom lane that we can show in the replay. Samax did not realize that he had to be close to Hansama to stop the TP. So he ended up reacting way too late. Hansama shows up for the fight. It's five versus four and Misfits win. That's the thing, it's not just about the roaming, right? You've got all these teleports on all these champions. Not just the top lane anymore, Hansama Mickey X really dishing out the damage. So now the gold lead grows a thousand and a half, and there's pressure on turret up top. There's pressure on turret in the mid. The unicorns, they tried to make a play, but it backfired once again. It backfired because they didn't have every single member ready to do their job. 
in the bottom lane here. Samax not interrupting a TP. It could have been a 4v4. Could have been a much closer fight then. Unicorns were actually looking to be proactive on the other side. Now it just ended up hurting them even more than before. Let's see the whole thing again. Look at bottom lane here. Samax has had so much time before this to actually stay near where the virus is. But no, he he walked to his turret before he turned around when TP started. And that's why Hansama shows up. He gets a double kill because of it. And that was a huge turnaround for Misfits. Absolutely disgusting, the amount of damage they're putting out. And team that stays together, plays together for sure. They are coming up pretty huge there. The Mundo damage matching what Senkux was putting out in this early game. Now, Senkux might be in some trouble as the Hextech ultimatum comes down. But with a Voice of Light, is able to knock back Exile and Cold promptly taken out by Max Lore. The 2v2 won by Misfits. Uh, it's, really, it's falling apart for Unicorns right now. I think a lot of what we're seeing is when people are playing completely new champions, uh, then they don't have the experience of what you're supposed to do always with them. Like in this case, you're not used to seeing an AD carry just kind of TP away from you. Top laners, no. Stay around the enemy teleporter if you don't have one. So you stop his TP and he can't join either. Samus in this case didn't. That cost him now mid lane. Another fight is about to happen and they just end up losing. And this is pretty much what, th what this patch and what this meta has been about is who can adapt the fastest. I know like, that does seem kind of like how it normally is, but there's just so many changes and everybody's out of their comfort zone. Right now, Misfits clearly finding that they have just the faster ability to respond. And we're going to go roaming again. Don't even need to step into that brush. Max Lore will. And here we go. Chains on. It's going to lock up one. It's going to lock up two. And that Alistar, he might not be a tank at this point. Getting chunked out. Mickey X as well. Really low. Exile coming around to try and get some cleanup duty on cold here. Looks like Misfits might have overstayed their welcome. Juggling the aggro. Han Sama, Max Lord, Senkux. Is he going to fall? Oh, yes, he one. will. And it looks like Exile gets revenge. Misfits got the turret, but at least Unicorns picked up one kill for themselves here. One for one trade. Another roam from the mid lane with Aurelian Soul and Talia. While well, Max Lord had a little shuffed and missed early on. He still picked up six assists so far in the game. And Senkux also 100% kill participation. Not such a mathematician on this one, Deficio. Is that one going to be worth that tower picked up? Yeah, I mean, a one for one plus a turret, of course, is worth it for Misfits. Even though I'm sure they would have liked to avoid Exile getting another kill on the rise, which currently seems to be the only champion that actually can get some damage down. White Knight is farming well, but he's not gotten the action he was looking for top lane. And that's the thing, Cold kind of made really not a whole lot of attempts to get him going in the early game. Instead, he tried to show up around the mid, he tried to fight a little bit for Scuttle Crabs, but not the same level of investment that we might have expected when the Darius got locked in. And now it is a Varus. Four kills. Rageblade completed. While the enemy dual lane is a defensive, supportive one, it's a carry dual lane from Misfit's side. And it's Han Sama. It's an, I mean, they have a ton of engage now, a ton of damage, and Aurelian Soul will not stop roaming. Like, this can only get worse at the moment. Looks like Mickey X is coming up too. Totoro Samix, they know. Gonna try and back off. It looks like everybody pinging around closer to the mid lane though instead. The misses there just so fast. They go wherever they want at this point, and it's so hard for Unicorns to try and answer them. 12 minutes into this game, still very much out of the Unicorns' hands with that 3,000 plus gold advantage. But what can they do? Let's try and look at that. Uh, we know Exile fully completed his Archangel here. He can actually deal decent damage if he gets the setup onto someone like Senkooks, but it requires Cold and Totoro to get in there. Cold ult means that Senkooks is not getting away, and Exile can kill him. So we're looking around mid lane especially. There is some catch potential for sure. Let's see if they're able to make it happen. It's worth pointing out too, Cold's gonna have damage. The Camille does have some. Oh yeah, yeah. Has I'm the Warrior Enchant completed now. Looks like though, Unicorn's a little bit late to try and answer. Let's see if the fight comes in. Oh, flank around the side. That's going to be the teleport in. Alfari, the Weaver's Wall cutting Cold off and the rest of the team, and they're bouncing them all over the place. Totoro is gonna get turned into a side of beef here in just a second. It took a little longer than Misfits might have wanted, but they pick up too. No TP from White Knight. It's on cooldown. Misfits knows we get a numbers advantage again, Pyra, on the top side. It's like 10 seconds away. That feels bad. But Unicorns Aloft are getting themselves in a situation where if a team is ready to pull the trigger, they can get punished. And Misfits are showing us another very, very good early to mid game because they're constantly reacting to what's happening and just forcing the fights with five versus four. And honestly, the way Misfits have been playing, they don't need a late game because early and mid is all that's going to happen. So it looks like red buff goes the way of cold, but still, that's just slim pickings at this point. Misfits getting everything else. Yeah, this meta is actually a huge buff for Misfits because it has gotten easier to cl close out games. It's gotten easier 
to try and secure the early barons and then get really far ahead. The big problem for them last but as we highlighted before, was never the early to mid game. That's why they looked really good, and it's the same thing so far this week. Unicorns of Love are trying something on top side, but gotta remember, that's where the Lulu is at, so not really the lane you're looking to fight around. Mid lane, maybe? I mean, I think you got it at this point. The Aurelian Soul has been quietly amassing, you know, kills and assists as well. I mean, Senkux has been a part of every single kill that Misfits have this game. They're trying. Mickey, he's got to be careful. There comes the ultimatum. Maxwell is at his back, and it looks like Cold's getting shoved and stuffed around. But he flashes forward, tries to get the kill. Mickey, he's not going to live too much longer, but he did take Cold down with him. And it looks like this is not going to be done just yet. Maxlor and Hansama double timing for a double kill. Samix is flashing and running, but I don't think he's going to get away from this one. Continually getting hit by those stars. <laughs> and Senkux just slowly chasing him down, and he picks up another. We just talked about how the bot lane is not the lane you want to play around if you are unicorns here. You don't have any damage with your Lulu Alistar versus this virus that is so fed. And Maxwell was already up there, so a lot of kills again for Misfits. Right now, he's trying bottom lane. He's getting a little angry, but I don't know if Alfari is going to fall down. Just Ooh, no. But that's why you gotta respect the Darius, even as a tank, because that's where he can kill you through the bleed. Alfari just stepped away, but Unicorns of Love has made three poor choices this game. Fight around the blue buff where Samus is not ready to stop a TP. Fight around the Rift Hill where you don't have TP yourself. And then go towards top lane where there's a fat virus and you die again. I see mistake number four here. White Knight, although he does have two teleports kind of flanking him up. There's the voice of light coming up a little early. White Knight getting ch chunked down. But it looks like Misfits, they don't want this fight. This could be big, though. Out by Cold. Let's see if the Unicorns can find a little bit of that magic. They do. Taking down Senkux. That's going to be crucial. Picked up by White Knight. Misfits are out of there, though. One kill here for Unicorns of Love. Had to use double teleport to secure it. But they did manage to take down Senkux. So at least a kill for the team, but as we highlight here, two big, big cooldowns used for it. Slows things down just a bit, but Misfits, make no mistake, they are very far out in the lead. You look at this gold differential, and it's almost as big as it was versus Fnatic. Now, in Spring Split, I wouldn't have thought I would have said that, but uh, the times, they are a change. They are looking very good to start off the Summer Split. The team that talks about redemption, talks about being so disappointed with not making playoffs the last split, and funny enough, the team that, even when they kept losing last split, so one team where all the pro teams said, no, these guys are good. These guys in scrims are good. But on stage, it just looked so inconsistent, so bad. Typically, when they had to close out games, not so far. Uh, they have to still show they can actually do that in this one, but uh, they're really far ahead. Yeah, we've got a long split ahead of us, but things are definitely looking good for the Misfits. So this is a team looking for redemption, as they said. It's certainly off to a good start. Well, not against two slouching teams either. I mean, Unicorns have had a lot of struggles, but as you pointed out, other than the mistakes, they actually have been showing us some good plays. It just seems like they don't exactly <laughs> know the direction they want to go. And Exile, speaking of directions, he's trying to make a great escape of his own. Oh, and he gets no. stunned up and stopped on the portal. Hansama coming through. Is this going to be a feed the Hans? Let's see who gets it. Everyone wants to kill here. Even Maxlor's coming. Maxlor, he's greedy. He wants it. All right, who's going to get this one? Anybody's guess at this point? Oh, he missed it. Senkus. Didn't even get an assist. Wow, Maxlor. <laughs> Better luck next time. Sinkings gets it though, they get a Cloud Drake as well. There's nothing on the top side for Misfits to grab. Because Afari's not even there, he's sitting mid lane. Right now, three toes to zero. Everyone from Unicorns pushed far, far back on the map. Yeah. Yeah, it is it is early on, but this is this is rough still for Unicorns right now. It's it's such a massive gold advantage. Misfits continuing to push that here as Han Sama. Just with a couple of minions. He's taking down this tower. Look at this guy. 7-0. Yes. He can auto attack. Level 11, Rage Blade, all the works. And even if they catch him, he's got the stopwatch insurance policy. Fatty 4 on the gold right there for Hansama. Right now, trying to get something on the other side. He should be able to secure the first turret for Unicorns of Love. Trying to hold on to whatever he can get at this point in the game. I like what they were trying to do with the Darius, but there just wasn't enough attention paid up towards that top side early on. And as you pointed out, the bottom lane wasn't ever really going to be able to do that much. It was it was hard to really execute their comp early, uh, based around the fact they had a defensive bottom lane, had a Rise mid who's a fine one v one champion, but still takes time to scale a bit. And they were against double roaming, Talia plus uh, Aurelian Soul. So I feel like all their productivity was just 
on Misfits, and they abuse it. Yeah. I give credit to the Moose as well. I mean, this is a man that's well known for drafting uh, frustrating compositions for the opposition to deal and with. And he now has the greatest coach name. He does. Of all I, time. I'm, I'm really happy he changed his name. Like, I've tried to make him change the name for a year. And he wanted to do it last split, but he was not allowed, like, in the middle of a split to do it. Oh. You can't just change names in the middle of a split. Oh, really? That's okay. kind of weird. You gotta wait between splits. Uh, yes, exactly. And then. I see, it makes sense. You got it confirmed. Like, we can't tomorrow suddenly have Exile changing name. That'd just be weird. What would he change his name to? I have no clue, but now he's gonna fight. For Alfari. Okay, here goes Cold. Weaver's Law coming down. Let's see if they've gotten the damage. And Alfari, he's chunked low, but he's still a Mundo, and the cavalry has arrived. White Knight will start by picking up the first kill. Is this Unicorns affecting the turnaround? It is messy. It is chaotic. Samix is gonna fall, though, on the back. And it looks like Misfits, they just have a little more in the tank, respecting the damage of White Knight and deleting everyone. Hansam has got two. Let's see if he can make it a three. Senkux, Maxlor, I've seen this movie before, Deficio, and it does not end happily for Exile. Double kill going the way. Sinkers. That's a 19-minute ace for Misfits. Looked like an okay fight at first for Unicorns of Love, killing Alfari. We get the replay instantly, so a lot of members jumping onto the Mundo. Even the Rise joining in, and they actually do take him down in time. But the problem now is, this Boris is gonna get full stacks on the Rage Plate and just sit there and hammer away while the rest of Misfits can also secure the kills. Also, Samix was really isolated from the rest of the team, and that was such a crucial Gragas ultimate to separate up some of the heavier damage dealers, let the tanks kind of get worn down a little bit, and then, yeah, Exile, good night, buddy. It's the second game in a row where Hansama gets the kills, but we gotta still highlight Senkos. Like, what a difference. Look, look he, at the damage. In this game here, like, he was dealing more damage in that fight, and while, yeah, it was a full stack rage, but he was sitting just hitting constantly with the W on Aurelian Soul. He's been part of so many kills in this game, yeah, now it's Baron from Misfits. This one's a little bit riskier, though, because Cold, he could still come in. Interrupted, nice. there's the belly bot from Mickey. He might be sacrificed, and he will. Exile picks up the kill, the rest of Misfits have to scatter. Cleaver comes out, stops on Totoro as the TP from White Knight completes. Totoro comes in, gets the combo. Do the Unicorns have enough to take down Hansama? That is a massive stopwatch, and what a turnaround! Triple kill from Maxlor, and they're gonna clean house here. That's a double for the Mundo Misfits. Baited and outsmarted. Yo, know, they thought they had the kills there, but they all walked together as a group. And then from one side, it's Max Lontelier knocking them back. And on the other side, it's Senkux on the rally and soldiers sitting and dealing damage. So, so much DPS landing onto unicorns, and they are too far behind to survive that. I cannot believe it. Misfits. They turned that one all the way up to 11. Revenge for Max Law as well, landing that knockback. That was that was sick. And he well deserved on the Talia kills as well. Yeah, I really need to see that one again. But also, let's highlight the fact That's that be highlight play. Misfits denied Colt getting into the Baron pit. I think he did his job. We have not seen a Baron steal yet in the EULCS. Yes, here he denies entrance, so they get the Baron. That's a great setup. Okay, they lose the support. Who cares? He's out. Let's follow. Five members of Unicorns. Maxwell moves around the corner. He's near the blue buff onto Ansama. Stopwatch comes in and then look damage into a knockback. Senkux lands a lot of DPS there uh, the moment the fight starts. See, we talked a lot about the roaming and, and the potential that this like Talia Aurelian Soul combo has to affect big plays around the map. But how about that AoE damage? And Maxlor, he is a happy man after that play. Even as a soul stealer, man. Oh yeah. What's yeah. buff? I mean, by the look, way. you got you got ten stacks on your dark steel, your dark steel. Like you got nothing left to do. Let's go read a book instead. Remember, it gives you the movement speed already on ten stacks now. That's uh, true. There was a fancy little soul steal buff, so he actually has the ten percent bonus movement speed right now. All right, Misfits looking to use that bonus speed to march right into the base of the unicorns of love. Last ditch effort. Alfari on the front line taking it up. That tower got so many holes. It's going to be looking like Swiss cheese in just a second. And Darius goes for the dunk, but he gets knocked right back, and the rest of the unicorns gonna fall. All opposition in the face of Misfits. They're laughing that one off. It is going to be GG. Good night. I think we got a candidate for new fastest game. 23 minutes to Fischio. Misfits cleaning up and crushing the Unicorns of Love. I expected Unicorn to show more in the early game from what we saw yesterday as well. But effectively, everything that could have gone wrong went wrong for this team. They were against double roaming from the mid lane, and we set this during the cast. Like, there are three very big moments where Unicorns of Love allow Misfits to just set up perfect plays. The top lane fight around blue buff, the Rift Hell fight, like all moments that could have been avoided if the entire team were on the same page and ready. They weren't. 
and Misfits are showing us another game of productivity, aggressive plays, and Senkooks. He's looking good this split so far. Not to mention clean, too. I, I know you want to talk about your boy Senkooks, but here's something for you. Han Sama hasn't died yet. That's also great. That stopwatch was sick, man. I mean, yes, he pushed the button, but he did it at the right time. It's true. Uh, overall, 2-0 start for a team that was hard to rate going into the split because they had the same players that failed last split, but they looked good last split in 25 minutes and then terrible for the remaining of each so game. So the easy solution is get rid of the rest of the game. Aha! Uh -huh. Just keep winning games around 25 oh minutes yeah. and then your style works because no one will argue that they weren't good in the early game. And I think if the meta does change and we start seeing longer game times, like maybe that's where we have to ask ourselves the question. But Misfits are off to a 2-0 and zero start, and, and it doesn't get that much cleaner. Yeah, it is true. And they didn't make any roster changes to the starting roster. Like yeah. some of the other There, there was a lot of critique around that. A lot of people were saying, like, you know. There were question marks. Hey, hey, Senkus is still in this lineup. Well, he's one of the big heroes of this game. I want to highlight the how many members are actually on stage after Misfits win. I think there's almost 10 people up there now because behind the scene they made changes. They added a lot of people. Jess has joined as both a sub and a strategic coach. They have two new young uh, subs as well, one for jungle, one for mid lane. And, and they also have added more assistant coaches uh, coming in. We've already seen a couple of them up there. So it's a huge infrastructure investment instead of replacing starting members. And so far the meta fits them and the team is playing fast and fun. Having a little bit of a chat with the Vitality guys who are going on next. Speaking of winning fast, I cannot wait for those two teams to match up. That is going to be awesome. And what happens when both teams are really good at playing early game and fast and they crash into each other? I think we get a lot of action. We probably do. I think so. I think that we got a lot of action this game as well. We did. It's very true. I mean, it did seem fairly one-sided for a little bit. Unfortunately, Unicorn's just making those mistakes, falling down. Now, remember, you guys at home are deciding our play of the game, so head over to at LLE Sports on Twitter. Give us your votes. Your choices, of course, are Max Lor, Senkooks, and Han Sama. That's actually a hard one. Yeah. There I'm were so many good plays from all of them. Oh, yeah, I don't know. I'm probably going either Senkooks or Max Law here. Okay. And Sam was good, but I feel He was like cleanup. He was, like, I'll, yeah, I'll be yeah, honest. A lot he was of times. I'm an AD carry player. I, I recognize right. that he cleaned up really well, but he did. Now, after the break, you're going to go ahead and find out what kind of tricks Attila has up his sleeves for Vitality versus Giants. We're also going to hear from Max Lord, so don't you go anywhere. And that's going to be closing here. Teleport coming in. Here comes Senkux. Get the combat off. He gets Yang dragged back in. But that is a lot of damage coming out of Talia, though. Maxlor, he's going to get chunked down. Exile, White Knight, double team. And it looks like they're turning around for Totoro, though. Ansama's getting one in Exile. He's taking the oh, portal he out, out of there. But White Knight, he walks the wrong way. That's a double kill for Hansama. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Giant needs help. Yeah, we can't, we can't, we can't move. Right there. I'm coming, I'm coming. OT, fight it. Get the plant, get the plant. Rise is no flash, Rise is no flash. Good job. I can do I don't know how to. kill, the rest of Misfits have to scatter. Cleaver comes out, stops on Totoro as the TP from White Knight completes. Totoro comes in, gets the combo. Do the Unicorns have enough to take down Hansama? That is a massive stopwatch! And what a turnaround! Triple kill from Maxlor! Uh, oh nice! Uh, funny fucking wanker! Okay, push me. Yeah, okay. I'll take that vote. I can TP in there. Good job, guys. I'm going top. It is going to be GG. Good night. I think we got a candidate for new fastest game. 23 minutes to Fischio. Misfits cleaning up and crushing the unicorns of love.